Hi, this is the advisor with Stacey Chalemi, the founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. Today, I'm very excited because we have Joseph Leonard on our show, and he is a big believer in honor, integrity, and patriotism. And he is a best-selling author, and he is going to talk about a bunch of topics that have a lot of interest to our listeners. So, um, Joseph, why don't you tell us about yourself <laughs> and everything uh, that you do? Well, I'm uh, here in Michigan, so M I to us is my. So I'm going to call you Chilemi. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, I was born and raised in Michigan, and even though I hate the winters, I, I do to choose to stay here. Uh, you know, I've been writing my whole life. I'm the holder of more than two dozen copyrights, but Terror Strikes Coming Soon to a City Near You is my first internationally released piece. And uh, soon, uh, December-ish, I'm, we're still I'm hoping right before Christmas, my next book, How to Write a Book and Get It Published, so that other aspiring writers who, you know, or, you know, if you haven't been inspiring to publish, just to write a book, now now's your time to think about that. So how to write a book and get it published uh, December, hopefully in time for Christmas, if not January. But yeah, Terror Strikes Coming Soon to a City Near You is still the book I'm promoting. And it does have uh, issues of health in it, mental health. That's why... Uh, you know, I'm a good fit to talk with you on your show. Yes. Uh, before with the show, we were talking about how you mentioned that your book talks about mental illnesses such as suicide. And um, I'd like to know a little bit more about that, because in our society, there, you know, um, suicide is, is a very big issue and it's not brought up as much as it should. You know, there are many people in many different um, communities that suffer from illness, that suffer from depression, transgender communities and, uh, you know, even bullying you know, has led to, um, you know, uh, suicide and especially during COVID, you know, people were locked down in their homes and that caused a lot of depression as well, which led to suicides as well. So this is an interesting topic and I'd like to talk a little about it. So tell me a little bit more how your um, book fits in with suicide and mental health. Yeah, well, being a book on terrorism, I like to say it's still, it's not a book about death but of life and living and dealing with terrorism, obviously, then you're dealing with the war on terror and you're dealing with the military then. And 22 veterans on average a day take their own lives. Yes. And of course, it's not limited to just vets with PTSD. Our right. first responders often can develop PTSD. If you're a survivor of a terror attack, uh, there is survivor's guilt, anxiety, depression yes. that comes with that. Uh, that's its own form of post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you said, with the lockdowns, the suicide rates spike in a few various categories during the lockdowns as people were isolated, and especially among our children because they were then so isolated. And so I... I myself am a suicide attempt survivor. Mm -hmm. So that's certainly not something that I like to talk about. Right. Uh, it's certainly not something I'm happy about. Uh, it, it's something to be embarrassed about, in my opinion, you know. But I consider it an important calling to address as part of this book. Because knowing there are people out there with anxiety, depression, PTSD, and could be contemplating suicide. And I like to say that we can all be a clearance if you get the oh, It's a Wonderful Life movie reference. Because we'll, we're recording in late November here, so the It's a Wonderful Life Christmas marathons will be coming again soon. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you're not an angel, but you can be someone's angel. Yes. And certainly, unlike the story of It's a Wonderful Life, where George 
stopped a pharmacist from poisoning a child that would have killed that child and ruined that family and ruined that pharmacist's life too. It's a dramatic movie. Things that happen in the life of someone contemplating suicide are certainly not likely to be that dramatic. Mm -hmm. But you can be their clearance anyway and let them know that there are people who love them and want them around. And you don't know what tomorrow may bring. Exactly. Like I said, I'm a suicide attempt survivor and now I'm an internationally published author. You you don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring and you don't know the value you bring to others. Because mm -hmm. people just don't generally have those conversations. So if you know someone who's a little off lately, and we're entering that time of year again with right. the holidays where yes. uh, suicides can spike again, it, talk to them. Make sure they know. You can't tell them. I don't tell them. And I'm a suicide attempt survivor. I know how you're feeling. You don't. Everybody is different. Yes. But at the same time, you can tell them all life has meaning and your life has meaning, meaning to others, even though you may not see it very much. You know, um, you've said so many good things. And, you know, I had for years written for, uh, in a, a veterans magazine. I was a journalist and I spoke with many um, people who were... Um, that that fought in the war and a lot of them had a, a lot of terrible stories and he talked about how it affected them when they got back to the states and some people you know um they were on the front line and and they saw some terrible things and even people who weren't on the front line you know suffered you know post um uh traumatic stress disorder um because they witnessed a lot of things that had a huge impact on their life you know, especially when they they were a witness to death. And, um, you know, some of these men and women came back and, you know, they were missing a leg or missing a body part and they had to have it reconstructed and they had to learn how to walk again and use their arms and legs again. And, you know, one of the biggest things they said is when they came back to America, and especially after they left the military, they didn't feel like they fit in anymore because, you know, they were taught specific duties. And then when they transitioned into the so-called real world, they didn't know where they fit. They, you know, their life was so different. And I remember even one gentleman telling me when he heard a sound, he would jump underneath it in his bed and get into Stan's position because he was so used to hearing certain sounds when he would go off to war and it would just give him flashbacks. And these people suffered traumatic um, mental health issues. Um, and, you know, they, you know, some of them did consider suicide and did get help for it, but, you know, um, it's something that definitely needs to be, you know, talked about and dealt with. And especially with people, you know, they should not feel embarrassed, you know, and even you, you know, when you went through that moment in your life, you know, everybody goes through traumatic is issues, but you shouldn't feel embarrassed because there's a lot of people that probably felt a lot like you that you just don't know about, you know? Yeah. And I felt it important for that to be part of terror strikes coming soon to the city near you because again while the main theme is terrorism it's about life and living and yes. a whole lot of other sub themes it, it's definitely not a rambo like shoot them up blood and guts kind of uh well that movie but yeah. <laughs> or book you know it, it's an intellectual pursuit uh, kind of book so let's talk about the life and the living, you know, like what type of issues, what type of themes are you trying to teach people when they read the book, when it comes to life and, and living? Well, again, uh, uh, it's about life, live your life, but don't be stupid mm -hmm. at the same time, right? Right. I mean, you, you've got to be aware to what's going on in the news. You've got to be aware of what's going on around you. You can't go through life completely oblivious. Exactly. Uh, there's the theme of the ostrich in the book. And if an ostrich wanders onto a train track, 
hears a noise, buries his head between the rails, isn't going to prevent it from being bowled over by the train, right. whether that train be stress or a terrorist or whatever in your life. So, and like in my Naperville chapter, Teresa says she thought she was, uh, you know, the a, a good parent to her child. But she realized she needed to be a bit of a more of a mama bear than she's been on this particular subject. Right. Now, what motivated you to write this book? Uh, well, most everything that I write about comes to me in a dream, and this is no different. So it's both literal and figurative, uh, uh, you know, achieving a dream. Yeah. <laughs> But the dream came to me originally in 2006, mm. and I had like at least half the book done, and then I just kind of hit a block. Right. And I said, okay, it's not ready. I figured I'd set it aside, you know, a few months, yeah, a few years at the most, but no, 15 years later. Oh, Wow. <laughs> the dream came back to me. I said, okay, now's the time to finish this book. Because while the Wuhan virus stuff isn't directly addressed, people, it is important uh, due to the suicide issue of the lockdowns, but the that people seem to think terrorism went away just because they're not seeing it nightly on their headlines. Right. So kind of now, as one person called it, a needed awakening and warning in their review, you know, as well as uh, entertainment on various subjects. Now, what's your take about terrorism? How do you feel about terrorism and, and what goes on in this world? You know, what kind of impact does it, it, it does it bring to you emotionally? Yeah, I was... I'm not involved in 9-11 in any way, shape, or form, but I do have a tattoo on my right arm there. I said I would never forget. Right. Uh, and I, I kind of have a, you know, this there but for the grace of God go I kind of story. I was actually in New York in August mm -hmm. and just a fluke of scheduling could have actually had me there during that day. Yeah. And, you know, uh, so there, there's that, uh, which is not to say that, you know, it amounts to much because at the end of the day, I wasn't there and so many people suffered. Uh, the many that died and those who have to deal with the after effects and those who survived, like we mentioned before, survivor's guilt. So uh, there's a lot of emotional things in there uh, that I felt I wanted to write the book about. And of course, it's for those who are political and non-political and mm -hmm. religious and non-religious. But there is a certain degree of that in the book because you have to, to write an honest book on terrorism both political and religious over undertones to why they claim they want to kill us. What's your uh, political take on, on terrorism? Well, I, I, I wrote a blog, one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist, right? There is a yes. degree of uh, perspective mm -hmm. from it, uh, but the majority of the world can agree on usually certain terrorists uh, and you know we didn't some people may try to blame America for our meddling in the Middle East they don't understand the full history of right. the Middle East yeah uh, so and it's the sad lack of history yeah uh, to not understand and, and mm -hmm. this is not to say all muslims are terrorists they're not not all terrorists are muslims right it's a shame i've got to give that disclaimer but i have to because i'm about to talk about uh islamic fundamental radicals which i call Giza 
was kind of like we called the Nazis, Nazis, mm -hmm. National Socialist Deutschland Amateur Party was shortened by Joseph Goebbels to Nazi Soci, and we just shortened it to Nazis. I have Giza, which is Global Islamic Jihadist Interim Army, because it Giza just rolls off the tongue a lot easier, like Nazi used to. And uh, again, they're not the only terrorists who are fighting, but you, people lacking in history don't understand, even since we've talked about military today, the Marine Hymn from the shores of Halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. They don't understand where that came from. Right. That we created a Navy, a, the Marines, to fight Islamic terror way back in our country's founding because mm -hmm. they were taking our ships, holding and selling our crew off as slaves to other. So this isn't a recurring thing. And then, of course, the Crusades, uh, people point to uh, without recognizing uh, mm -hmm. the area we went into were areas that were usually Jewish and Christian and that the Muslims had overrun first. The Crusades were a response, not the cause. <laughs> yeah. So... There's, you know, history going on in this book, too. It's technically historical fiction mm -hmm. because there are historical aspects that take place in this. So that it can be both a history lesson and a warning as well as an entertaining read. Right. It sounds very like a very interesting book to read. I mean, we've had terrorism for hundreds of thousands of years. It goes way back when, you know, we've been consistently fighting and, and countries have been fighting amongst each other's and, you know, nothing has ever been accomplished, but yet w the war still goes on. But, you know, there has been no solutions, nothing benefited from all this terrorism. Do you think anything will ever change or you think it's just going to be a repetitive you know, issue where, you know, terrorism will always be there and, 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 you know, nothing will ever improve? Or do you think things will, at some point in the future, maybe a light bulb will go on, and then maybe people will start to communicate better and, and maybe even come to a conclusion of, of some sort to try to make things better amongst each, each other? Well, as long as there's people who are willing to change their behavior and cower in fear to others who wish to either hurt or kill them if they don't, you know, succumb to their will, as long as there are people like that, and there are a lot, mm -hmm. there will always be terrorists willing to try to use the threat or actual violence to indeed bend other people's will to theirs uh, through the through violence or the threat of violence. Like you said, it's been around forever. It's, you know, the weapons of the day yeah. <laughs> are, are what make it different than what it was then. Right. Yes. It exactly. doesn't take much. If, if a terrorist group gets a hold of uh, a dirt, the capability of a dirty bomb uh, they can kill millions, right. millions, rather than just thousands, mm -hmm. and don't need to hijack a plane to do it. Right. Now, is there a, a meaning behind your book that you want people to learn? Is is there, or is this more for entertainment, or do you want some, is there some type of principle or meaning that you're trying to get across to people when they read your book? Yeah, again, like I said before, live your life but be aware of what's going on around you. You can't be an ostrich to bury your head in the sand. It isn't going to stop what's going on around you from harming you just because you, you know, put your fingers in your ears and go, la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Do you feel, um, how do you feel, what's your take about being an advocate? Or, you know, do you think people should get involved and, and try to, you know, help to better society or bring awareness to society? Or is, you know, is do you feel like that will benefit, you know, our, our society in any way? Well, I, 
I come at it from a Christian perspective that, yeah, you, I mean, if and where you can leave things better than you found them. Yeah. And be your brother's keeper as best you can to a degree, but that's a charitable motion, not a governmental motion where you steal right. from somebody to help another. Now, do you, where you said you have a website that has a lot of articles and you've written a lot of articles in the past. Have, are your articles about various topics or do you stay more on this topic? Yeah, no, I, I, my blogs are usually on politics. Yeah. And there's a couple blogs as well as press releases up on my terrorstrikes.info site. You can go to terrorstrikes.info. If you want to go directly to the press releases, you could go do slash press dash releases. Uh, you can go to the synopsis at slash synopsis. If you want to see some quotes from the book, you could go to terrorstrikes.info slash quotes. And just one last one I'll leave you with is reviews. If you go to Amazon, yeah, you'll see some reviews or Barnes and Noble, they get scattered. I bring my reviews all together under terrorstrikes.info slash reviews so you can see reviews from all over the internet in one place. Now, your book isn't out yet, you said, but it will be out soon? No, yeah, Terror Strikes Coming Soon to a City Near You came out April 15th, 2022. Okay. My next book, how you, how to write a book and get it published, will be later this year or January. Now, what motivated you to write that book? You said you wanted to inspire writers who have. Yeah. That. Well, I've been on several different shows where they wanted to talk to me specifically about the writing and publishing process. Yes. So obviously, there's people with those questions. So I took those interviews, had them transcribed, and then expounded upon them for that book to, yes, help someone who's aspiring to be a writer or someone who's currently a writer aspiring to become published, how the different angles there are to approach that in the, that book. And also I have uh, an author site, terrorstrikes.info obviously is for that specific book. I also have Joseph M. Leonard, and that's L-E-N-A-R-D. There's no O in Leonard. Joseph M. Leonard dot U-S is my author site. Oh, okay. And so where can we find Terror Strikes? Anywhere you can buy books. You know, you, the, yeah, if you have a brick and mortar store near you still, uh, I'm a big advocate for shopping local. Yeah. Uh, they can look at terror strikes coming soon to a city near you uh, uh, title and, and, and order the book for you. You will need to remember the subtitle because there are a bunch of books that say terror strikes and then something else. So, <laughs> or, of course, anywhere online, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, any of the smaller. I, my book is sold out of Booktopia in australia mm -hmm. uh i've got australian sales i've got south african continent sales i've got england sales in england i'm still waiting to crack the european continent i'm not sure why i'm having that issue but in the u.s and canada of course mm -hmm. uh, because it's really an international book there's right a, there's a chapter on uh on, on uh tokyo Madrid, Spain, the UK, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So it, you know, it's not just dealing with terrorism in the US perspective. Right, right. Now, if you can give a few tips to the audience about, you know, um, about everything that we talked about, terrorism, suicide, living your life in the now and the present, you know, are there any certain takes that you would really want people to realize, especially after reading your book, you know, important tips that people really need to open their eyes to? Well, yeah, again, I mean, life has its up and down, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you got to be careful to just not get too down and too high on the good during the good times. And remember that, uh, like uh, I have, I've been saying it for forever. I have my character say in the book uh, when asked how things are going. Remember, it could always be better, but it could often be worse. Right. Right. 
Exactly. Exactly. Well, I have to tell you, Joseph, it's been a pleasure having you on your, our show. And, you know, once again, thank you so much for coming on and sharing about your book and sharing some of your intakes about life and important topics that people need to hear more about. So thank you very much for coming on the show. I really thank appreciate you your time. Having, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.